So why am I here? Well, I'm um, taller, older, and less politically experienced than most members of parliament. And what I'm here to tell you is to stop thinking about becoming politicians yet. Because it is my view that the best politicians, men and women, do something else before they come into politics. And forgive me, ladies, that may be a, a controversial thing. But my background led me to develop confidence and skills and to have a family that meant that when I eventually did suddenly wake up one day and think politics was the right thing to do, it was possible. Um, if you, you are very, very privileged at ladies, and I see some gentlemen at the back. If you had said to me when I was your age that one day I would be standing in a very nasty, cheap blue suit uh, from a tall top shop, um, and I was a Tory MP, I would have laughed and gone back to whatever I was doing, which was not thinking about politics. Um, I went to my local state school. I was the first person in my family to ever stay on at school beyond the age of 16. And, you know, we didn't talk about politics in my family, or if we did, it was, uh, it was politics of extremism, not really politics of importance. And I um, never really thought politics was relevant to me. And I voted if I was in the country. I, I, I left Nailsy Comp. I went to um, Oxford. I was very lucky. Uh, and then went into the city. I'm always very proud, actually, of being financially literate. I think it's an important thing for women. And funny enough, financial services is a sector that has the highest number of female managers. And the reason is, I think, it's a meritocracy. You just get judged on what you do. And it's a, actually an area where you can just prove yourself. You don't have to hang around doing the old boys' network and hobnobbing. You can just get on and do the work. And funny enough, uh, it's not at all like politics where there is still a massive amount of hobnobbing and old boys' network to be uh, encountered. But I had various business careers, and then I uh, had three children, and I decided uh, one day, in 2006, that enough was enough, and I should stop being cross about things that were going on in the country and start to get involved. And I did that other thing that having had a career in other areas gives you, which is an extreme amount of misplaced confidence. And I happened to sit next to a bloke called George Osborne one night, who is now the Chancellor, and I decided I was just going to say to him, you know what, get a job. Don't pay me for six months, but could I come and help you? I used to be very financially literate. I'd run a, a big team, and could I actually um, come and help? And he said yes. So I went to volunteer for him for six months, and then he hired me and as an advisor. I got to get stuck in, basically, to, um, to, to bashing Angela's government's policies and other things, but essentially got involved in the kind of inner heart of politics, if you like, for, for my party. And it was a hugely, in, and from that to actually becoming an MP was a big step for me, because people like me don't become MPs. Most MPs, uh, traditionally also in my party, are white, middle-class men. And actually the party made a huge effort to reach out to women and uh, the result was we went from 50 to four, 15 to 50 MPs at the last election, maybe 49. It was a big change. And so what have I learned in this whole process? The first thing is that uh, going into politics with something to offer other than just political experience is incredibly helpful because there's a huge amount of hot air talked in this place and very little um, kind of getting stuff done. And if you come from a background where you've worked in business or you've been a teacher or a nurse or a social worker or you've been an entrepreneur or a surgeon, you know how to get things done. And you can work with the system or you can say, actually, the system needs changing and I'm going to be part of the process that changes it. The other thing is, um, I already had my kids and Joe, am I allowed to say that you're actually pregnant? Congratulations. Um, hooray. <laughs> Um, it's difficult having a family here. It's really difficult having a family, and I had managed to get mine out of the way, and um, they were tricky to manage, but essentially it made it possible. And the last thing is that being a woman here is incredibly, incredibly important, because when you get a difference into a group, things start to change. We talk about the magic number being about 30%. You might have heard of the 30% club, the idea that if you have one in three people around the table who is different, <laughs> then suddenly the politics, the dynamics of the bigger group starts to be different. And it's not that women uh, particularly care all about the same sorts of things. And I've always rejected the idea that 32 million people, which is the number of women in the country, all care about the same stuff. Um, but there are some things that resonate more with women, and I've been quite active in campaigning on internet safety and making it more difficult to access um, material online that can be quite damaging. And it's been an, an issue that is overwhelmingly supported by women, and, and quite supported by men, but actually women really find this, you know, the, the e really easy access to violent rape pornography, for example, really, really repugnant. And now we're starting to get women into positions of 
responsibility. Actually, across party, there's been a huge cross party movement on this. We're starting to see some things change. And that's why it's so important to get in and to actually be part of the change. Because fundamentally, unless your voice is being heard at the table, people aren't really speaking up for you. And I'm sorry to tell you that, that's probably quite a depressing message. But the good news is, all politics now, whether it's national government, local government, anyone here, parents, you know, local councillors, parish councillors, any of that good lowest level, lowest level of politics, desperate to get young voices in and to get young women in. And decisions are increasingly pushed out of this place quite properly and pushed down the food chain, down to local level. So even if you think you might want to be a politician in 20 years' time but you're too busy having a life before then, think about becoming a local councillor. It doesn't matter what party. Just be part of the political process and make sure your voice is heard at the table and your issues are on the table. Um, I'll stop there, you have a bit fast, but anyway, um, good luck to you all. Please don't come, I mean, come and apply for work positions with all of us, but please don't think about becoming political candidates until you've done something um, else in the real world, would be my one piece of advice to you.